I think I work at a place that doesn't exist. I remember when the letter came into the mail letting me know I was hired. It had managed to pull me out of a depressive episode and gave me hope that maybe I wouldn't be a waste of space for the rest of my unnecessarily exasperating life. I had been so used to my same routine of waking up, school, work, study, sleep, that I eventually looked for a new job in another state for an impulsive change of scenery. I guess I was looking for a new life in general though. I was about to go from a fast food workplace to a security guard in a town I had never heard of. The job was strange to say the least. Everything down to the application process was a bit. Retro I suppose is the right word. I had to mail in my application letter and was shocked to see that even though I had written my phone number in the letter, they had sent through mail my job acceptance. Before I knew it, I was making the drive from Loud New York to a quiet town in Maine. Maine is different. The town I live in is peaceful at night and still during the day. Each counterpart matches perfectly together. It's a more modern town with themes of well-preserved history. The people are nice and wave on walks as you drive by. My neighbors were welcoming when I moved in. It makes me wonder how the building where I work is the way it is. The building on the outside underestimates what's inside of it. It's dull and old looking with about two floors. The walls seem as though it has not been so much as rained on since the fucking 80 seconds. I swear. Old dirt coats it and leaves and sticks cover the top of it. It's not overwhelmingly big until you walk in. The first time I stepped foot into it I thought I had been teleported. It was way bigger inside than it seemed on the outside. It was a roller skating rink and a large one at that. The only thing that was right about it was its correlation to the outside. Long story short, the place looked completely abandoned which is honestly the only thing that made sense about it. At first, I called my boss asking if I was in the right place. It went straight to voicemail. I had absolutely no signal. I didn't seem to get one until I drove down the dirt path and on the road. I parked and called again. The conversation went along the lines of, Hi there, I think I'm at the wrong place. What do you mean? Well, I'm at an old skating rink. That's it. What? The skating rink? That's the place. The instructions are on the security's office desk. He just hung up. I was gonna call him back but the entire situation was so confusing and my new developed interest with the place took over. I turned my car around and drove back. In hindsight, it was stupid. I've never even met the guy who was supposed to pay me. The building proportions were not right in any fucking universe. And for all I knew, I was walking into a very dangerous situation. Considering I had no understanding of any of what this place holds inside of it. When I went back and I was hesitant but powered through as I searched for the office. The office is normal unlike the rest of the place, small and normal for what you would expect in a building, which is terrifying for a place like this. This was the only room to have a signal. I found the instructions and taped to them was a $50 bill. The note stated that I would get $50 each night and an extra $100 on the seventh night. For each week I stay, I was to work from sundown to sunrise and to only check around the building each 5 hours I was there. The next part was the weirdest part. This is what it says word for word. Upon seeing a human in the building, even if it is yourself, lock the door, call me, turn off the cameras and do not leave the room until sunrise, no matter what you hear from the outside even if it is yourself. To this day, that still gives me nightmares. Everything about this job was just nightmare fuel. I wasn't sure what I had really just gotten myself into and as weird as it sound I wanted to just work one shift to get a better understanding of all of it. Maybe I was blinded by the fact I had turned my entire life upside down for this job because I was naive and depressed or maybe, in some sick, fucked up way, I knew this was gonna ruin my life and I wanted to see if it was capable of coming into fruition. I'm aware of how much of an idiot I sound as well as how much of one I am. One shift and then I would decide what to do next exactly. I locked the door, pocket the $50 and sat down. Powering up the cameras, I could see every room in the building. There's 10 rooms in total, not including the bathrooms, in which it makes 14. But a total of 15 cameras with 3 showing the large skating rink. The upstairs is an arcade as well as an eating area, however that's a separate room itself. There is a motion sensor on each camera which will flash a red motion detected on the monitor in the room it's in. The first time I did the 5 hour checkup on the building it was 11.45 pm. It took a total of 15 minutes to even bring myself to get out of the chair to leave the room. I was practically on the verge of pissing myself. Each room was completely silent. 
Only half of them even have lights. I was completely convinced that at any point someone was gonna murder me and no one would ever find me because this place is in the middle of fucking nowhere. I did make it through though, unmurdered at that. Weirdly enough, the night was normal. Of course besides the building itself existing, and the notes seeming premonition and so against better judgment. I went back for my next shift, and the one after that in each one I've had in the last five and a half months. Of course though, I wouldn't be writing this if it was all normal because, to no one's surprise, it has not been. After around the third week, I was doing better than I had in a very long time. I had a good routine, go to work from sunset to sunrise, go to bed, wake up, grab breakfast, and do a bit of schoolwork. I had even begun to make friends around here. One morning I had woken up early to get food at a new place in town. It was a cute little coffee house and was a good change from the cheap coffee I had at home. One of the big changes in my life was I was a bit more social and I started chatting with the waiter. We were around the same age so we talked about school and other boring shit. The topic of my job came up. I don't remember what exactly I said about what I did but it was something like I work security at some creepy ass abandoned skate rink. The guy asked where in town and when I told him the street, he just looked really confused. He told me that not only did he live one road down, but that the fucking place wasn't there. I knew that it was impossible because I had literally gone there for the past three weeks of my life. I asked him where he thought it was then and he said man, I've lived here for my entire life and there has never been a skate rink here. I drive that road to get here and it's all just trees on it. It was around two weeks after that when I began to notice that there were things in the building that wouldn't show up on the cameras. For example, there are a few skates that have been left on the rink, five in total, however only four would show up on the cameras. Another thing is in the upstairs eating area. There are six trash bins in total. Each one is in the shot of the cameras. Only two are seen in the footage. When you work at a place like this, you can't ask questions. You know you'll never get answers. In total, I have only ever seen two people here up until now. I hate saying it as if it's normal but I don't have a choice. Like I said, I really will never understand any of this shit. The first time it happened it was around 4am I had checked all the cameras minutes prior and was just scrolling through my phone. I had grown accustomed to just leaving the door unlocked because I had had no real reason to lock it. When I saw the red flashing from the corner of my eye, I have never been more terrified in my life. The first night seems like a piece of cake at that point because I had not seen it flash that nauseating red motion detected. The camera it opened up to was number 2, the lobby. I had looked at what the monitor was showing me. I had no clue what I was about to see and I truly think that was scarier than not being able to see anything at all. It took me about 45 seconds before I saw it. In one of the corners behind a chair was a little kid. I couldn't see its face. I didn't know how old it was supposed to be or their race or if it was even fucking a boy or girl. All I knew was, if I didn't listen to what I was instructed to do in the letter, I was going to die. Trying not to shit myself, I locked the door quickly but quietly. When I called the boss his reaction was not one I thought it was going to be. Instead of panic or dismay, he sighed and repeated the instructions to me. Except, instead of telling me to turn off the cameras, he asked me to describe it. I can't even get my words out. I was livid at the fact that he wanted me to describe the thing instead of helping me. I can barely pick out one thought in my brain. But when he repeated his instructions a second time, I just sat down and told him what it looked like. I was suddenly exhausted. Too exhausted to argue, or yell, or try to make a run for it. I guess fear does that to you. Custom to his character. He hung up on me right after I finished telling him what it looked like and he left me with a simple okay kid. You can turn off the cameras. I spent the rest of the night shaking in fear. Too scared to so much as blink knowing it would take my eyes off the door. After that, once the sun rose, I sprinted out of there like my life depended on it. I didn't sleep for the rest of the day. I had so much to think about. On one hand nothing bad really happened and the pay was above average to say the least. I had a good life because of that job. But on the other, I knew what I saw wasn't human. I was very aware I needed to leave. It was dangerous and far above anything I wanted to deal with. But I have a running theme of being completely ignorant. So, I went back the next night, and it was completely normal. The more friends I've made here, the more I've learned not to talk about my job. Anytime I do they swear they've never seen it or heard about the place. So it's just best they think I work in some office building a town over. At this point anyone I associated with has no idea about the security job. I plan to keep it that way. The second time I saw something was about four months in. 
I was in finals week so I was enthralled in some textbook on American history when I noticed the motion detected alert. My heart did the whole skipping a beat then racing at the speed of light thing like it did the first time. This time it pulled up camera number 8. This was one of the arcade cameras. It was going to be a whole lot harder to look for a person in the arcade considering there's so much going on in the room. However, before I looked, I jumped up and locked the door and began to type in my boss's number. The phone rang as I searched and as he picked up right as I saw what I was looking for. This time, it was a man. Instead of seeing its entire body though, he seemed to be peering over one of the arcade machines. In person, the machines are around six and a half feet tall and here stood some wide-eyed creature looking over it, directly into the camera. It was the same routine as before, my boss tells me the instructions in the letter, except he tells me to describe it and hangs up on me, leaving me terrified. I once again sat in the corner of the room just watching the door and made a quick escape in the morning. On my drive home that morning, I crafted a plan. I would go back to work tonight and take a picture of every room in the building. I would take a picture of the path that led to the building. I would take a picture of every single wall that made that goddamn place stand. But most importantly, I would have evidence that it's real and that I'm not losing my mind. I got there a little bit early that night. I took a photo of everything on the outside and when I stepped inside I took about 200 photos of the entire place. Finally I had some fucking proof that I don't run around the woods at night. That night was uneventful. I was just excited to go home and upload all of them to my computer to print it. I wanted to finally be able to tell someone the truth. I enjoy my life now, truly, but I feel like I'm living half a lie. When I got home in the morning though, every single photo was in complete darkness. There's absolutely nothing in any of the photos. That was impossible though. All of these photos I took during the day in the bright sun. I did everything from enhancing them putting filters on them and eventually I had to accept defeat. I was lost. I was tired of this. I'm sure you're just wondering why I haven't quit yet. I honestly don't know. There's absolutely no reason for me to stay here but I just can't bring myself to do it. Of course I can get other jobs, I'm aware of that. Money isn't even an issue anymore I just, I don't know, can't. But I guess that brings me to now. Five half months later, I'm currently sitting in the security office, typing this on my computer. The shift started the way it always has. I made my first amount of rounds and it was, well, uneventful. Eventually I came in here to finish an essay and when I finished I did my regular checkup of going through each camera. When I finished, I played some games on my phone. Around 35 minutes ago, the red motion detected alert went off. Camera number 5. Camera number 5 points almost directly at my office door. I didn't have to search for any kind of person this time. I mean, it's right fucking there. I haven't called my boss yet and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm too scared to talk. I know it'll hear me. I know I should call him. But I'm scared that when it does hear me, it's going to kill me. Hell, I'm not sure what I'm even going to tell him when he asks me to describe it. My boss doesn't know what I look like, so it's not like I can just tell him it's me. I can just tell him it's me. I can j 